jogging by the seaside three years ago, and at the same time multitasking, listening to a TED talk, as a matter of fact, and I was checking my Twitter. Um, let's see. And I saw a tweet. It was about a little Yezidi girl in a refugee camp. Apparently she was deaf and she needed to have an operation now. And you know a tweet is a rather short you know, post and the person included a phone number. So I called. I called because being a refugee you are a minority and being a little girl you have other disadvantages in this world. On the top of those, being Yezidi and disabled. Now, you are a minority even among the minorities. So I decided to call. Uh, the person I talked to, she's a nurse, and she's volunteering at this camp, refugee camp. And she told me about this girl named Emilda, four and a half years old then. Uh, she was given a wrong injection when she was a baby that left her deaf. Now, she, she had to have an operation before the age of six, or else she could never regain her hearing back. Um, I knew that the government was helping the refugees. They were treated for free in hospitals, and I had a good social network, so I started making some phone calls. Well, I call people who know people, you know, to get this thing done. Uh, however, after a lot of calls, probably after the, I don't know, sixth, seventh call, I realized that Emilza was not in the circle of refugees eligible for help, mainly because she's Yezidi. Having a faith different than the majority, I know how, how things can get difficult. So I decided to help. I, I inquired the cost of the operation. It, it was just like $2,000. So I called a friend whom I was sure would help. He and I put together the money and called the family and said that, okay, this operation can be done, we have the money. <laughs> so when we talked to the hospital though, um, we realized to get this operation done, there needed to be, they, they need a device, a medical device that will be implemented through this operation. I was like, what device? Well, okay, let's get this also. And I checked it out, and it costed something like $25,000. Well, first I cried, and secondly I thought, how can I get this money together now? Because I'm a persistent person, and if you know, I want to do something, I won't stop until I, I, you know, I do it. It's done. So. Now I needed a lot of money. I started calling people, asking for any kind of help, give me ideas, how can I get this done? So a friend of mine, she's a nurse in a government hospital in Ankara. <coughs> uh, that's Percy, by the way, my you know, persistency. Yeah? Meet, meet Percy here. So this friend of mine, she's a nurse in Ankara, and she called me, she said, oh, she knows just the right people, and they do those operations all the time in, in that hospital, so I shouldn't be worried. She really talked to the professors, and you know, we've been in touch. They said we just needed two things. One, a permit from the camp to get her out of the refugee camp, and second, we needed a transfer from the hospital in Diyarbakir to Ankara. So we started working on those, and we made you know, many phone calls, and people who know people, again, you know, the same um, lobbying, and then finally we got those papers. Oh yeah, we were close now, and the family was very excited, they all got ready for the operation, and the day before her transfer from Diyarbakir to Ankara, my friend, the nurse, she called, and she was crying on she said that the operation was canceled without an explanation. We both were heartbroken and very furious. A Percy told me that this, this story will come to a stop only when Emilda hears again. So I started thinking what else could be done. Then I thought, oh, maybe we could talk to the uh, medical company that we're going to buy the device from, and they may help us. You know, they may give us a bargain. So, 
So we found a friend who has a connection in the medical company, dated the bargaining, and yes, we got it. So now the gap has gotten smaller, hence the hopes higher. Still, we needed the money though. Uh, so what happened is, I got some news from the camp though, and they said the camp was gonna be closed soon. So we should get it done quickly, really. At that time, somebody called from Ankara again, uh, a person who is a very close relative to a politician, and this politician is in a very high position in the government. And life, I mean, he said he has a daughter who's at the same condition. She was deaf, had the same operation, could hear and speak now, and he almost cried on the phone, and we talked over an hour, and money wasn't an issue, he was gonna help. And I said, thanks God. You know, that night I danced at home, really, and the next morning I went to meet him uh, with a huge smile on my face. I was waiting, I kept waiting and waiting, <laughs> and after a while, the huge smile turned into a nervous giggle, and I called the number, and the number I called could not be reached. He was a no-show, I could never reach him. And I cried once more that day. And then I started asking for help, because at that time, I got pictures from the camp, and Emilda's got her fifth birthday already, and um, the, the medical company, they were calling and saying that they can't keep the price down forever. The value of a dollar bill goes higher and higher each and every day, so we should be quick. So I started asking for help from people, and people will tell, well, they will be discouraged when they will hear how much money needed. They will say things like, you know what, when you come close, let me know, I promise I'll give you the last 500 bucks. That's on me. Well, I was not close. However, they gave me a great idea. Well, I started telling people, we needed $25,000 in the beginning, and we've already collected 23rd of it, 23,000 of it, so only 2,000 more to go to cross the finish line. Then the helps, the donations pure, and finally we were able to get the money. Now I was very happy. We get the hospital ready, everything was just fine. She's going to have the operation. I talked to the doctor. The doctor was a great man, actually. He took the time to explain me the whole procedure uh, and just left me with another struggle. <laughs> because obviously, this operation was only the tip of the iceberg. And once the operation was done, Amida needed to have maybe a year or even more long rehabilitation sessions in order to hear and speak. Also, this device that will be implemented with the operation, they needed to do tunings on it on a regular basis. And the rehabilitation center and the camp, they're like so far away. Now, how are we gonna do that? And then came into play the actors and actresses of the Arbacher Municipality Theater. They found a person to help and just the right person. That was a driver who said two sons, both blind, so he could have a great empathy with Emilda's family, and he helped us for the transfer uh, and everything. So a lot of wonderful people, you know, gathering together to help Emilda. Uh, then there was the summer. Um, meanwhile, in the rehabilitation center, a child developmental specialist, she was following Emilda, great doctor, while well, she and I kept in touch. She was telling me every time Emilda was having a progress, and I was very happy. Went for holidays in the summer. When I came back, we talked, and she said to me, uh, the family is gone back to Iraq. And I was like, how? Because without the rehabilitation, everything, the operation, all was just garbage. How could that be? I was, you know, panicked. But then she said, this, this angel, uh, she said that she's going to Iraq, actually, on a voluntary basis to follow up with Emilda and do her rehabilitation. 
And she said the last time she was there, some 30 families gathered, and they each holding hands of a child. And they were asking for help because these were the children of the same town, and they had the same wrong injection, and they all went back. And now that Emilda could hear and speak, could they also? Will she help them? Since then, she's been in talks with the authorities, both in Turkey and in Iraq. As a result, four more children had the operation, and all other children will be operated as well. Now, this, this angel, this child development specialist, Dr. Meral Karagöz, is here with us today. She came from the Africa. <laughs> This is Emilda, by the way, yeah, there. And thirdly, if, the, if there wasn't persistency on my part, on Dr. Meral's part, this story, Emilda's story, will be untold. So please insist on who you are, what you want to do, and your story will be told as well. Thank you. <laughs> 